Mama cows at peak lactation in the middle of summer drink up to 50 gallons of water a day. I have nine cows. That's a lot of buckets. We're gonna need a better option. To hopefully avoid at least a few of the tears I knew would be coming in the plumbing aisle, I made this beautiful diagram and 11 billion trips to the home center, some online shopping, and a lot of tears later, I had every item on my list. We're gonna start right here at the wellhead. Two years ago, I used water witching to determine the location where we would drill a well. My next door neighbor has a well that they only had to drill to 40 feet and ever the cost saving enthusiast, I hoped we would be able to replicate his same results. We were not. We dug for 225 feet, at which point my overconfidence in water witching really started to hurt my wallet. At 225 feet, because that was the cutoff for being able to spend that much money, we shut off the drill and as the foreman was walking over to tell me, hey, we haven't hit water, we should try another hole, water started shooting up out of the ground. And that is when we found our biggest problem maker yet, the artesian well. Not to be confused with artisan, as I often do when I'm writing and reading that word. An artesian well is a literal gold mine for just about anyone, not just farmers, because it is a never ending source of water. Not only are artesian wells super, super cool, they're also super, super rare. In fact, the guy who dug our well said that in 40 years of well drilling, he's only ever found one other artesian well. However, it presents a ton of problems because as soon as that water started coming up out of the ground, I got a call from the state of Tennessee saying that my groundwater was contaminating the groundwater very confused by what's going on here. <laughs> I asked what my options were and they said, well, you could divert the water to a pond. And I was like, you can divert the groundwater to the pond that's in the ground that when it overfills, it'll flow right into the groundwater. And they said, yep, that sounds great. So here we went, which takes us to our next destination on our treasure map. Come with me. Very conveniently, we had this broken pond, well, at least, we're gonna call it a pond. And I was like, this is perfect. We'll just come right into this pond. But first I needed some baby pigs, some bentonite clay, and five months of them prancing around in the bottom of the pond to actually seal it. But I paid a lot of money for us to dig a 225 foot well. So I wanted to actually have some use case for this very expensive hole I dug. So I decided to figure out how to divert the water on its way to the pond and make a quick pit stop at a water trough for the cows that has a float valve that will automatically fill. Then when it's filled, it will shut off the water and then the rest of the water goes into the pond. But today's mission, should we choose to accept it, is to not just have one water trough and have to route the cows through the entire pasture to this one single water trough, we wanna make water trough spots all through the pasture so we can continue our rotational grazing scheme. We want fresh water right where we want it all the time on demand. All right, back at the wellhead. Our first three trips to a home center yielded this beautiful masterpiece, which allows us to send our water over to the trough and to the pond but it also gives us a temporary option because my little baby calves are really short right now and they can't reach the taller trough to be able to turn this on. And immediately upon turning that faucet, you see the artesianness of the well artesianing. I am no scientist, obviously, but it is so cool to me that when I turn that little faucet thing, that water immediately starts flowing out of this kind of like an actual faucet. And that works because we're this close to the wellhead. However, the further that we get away from the wellhead, and if there's any kind of slope or change in grade at all, the water flow gets smaller and smaller and smaller, which is why we now need to figure out a way to pump the water from the wellhead out to the other side of the field. The problem though, is that well pumps tend to be electric and I don't have electricity down here. Before you see this in the background and think that this is the solution to the problem, think again, this is my gate opener, you silly goose. And by the way, if you know anything about these things, you know how to fix them, then uh, send me a message because I've never actually been able to get this to work. Finding an artesian well like this is like finding gold. 
but the infrastructure required to actually get the water from here to other places is a lot different, aka way more expensive than what's required to run a regular old well that just needs a pump. It was going to cost something like $6,000 to get power out here and then I also had to build like a little house that was like temperature controlled and all these other things that did not seem remotely possible right now. And the other alternative was stringing out like 7,000 feet of extension cords, which as you're dragging it through puddles and you know, being around livestock all the time doesn't seem like the safest option to me. So when I was thinking about how I could actually solve this problem, I thought about a different problem that we just solved up at the house. Enter the sponsor of today's video. Anchor. A while back, Adam had been given the task of figuring out some sort of battery or generator backup for our house because we live in Tornado Alley and it is one of my greatest fears that we'll lose power for multiple days at a time and lose everything that I've worked so dang hard for and spent so much money and time and everything else that is stored up in our freezer now. I mean, we're talking about thousands and thousands of hours and dollars that I really don't want to lose. He was looking at gas and diesel generators and I didn't want to have to deal with all of the gas and the engine maintenance, winterization, all that stuff. And he was like, well, battery backups have come a huge way so you should look at those with a solar option. This unit has the same output capacity as 40 of these, and it can run most household appliances. So for example, if we plug our freezer into this on one full charge, it'll run our freezer for a day and a half. The most insane thing about this though, is that with these solar panels, it can either do a continuous recharge, like a trickle charge, or, it will recharge the entire unit in less than two hours. So I got to thinking, there's probably no reason that this portable thing couldn't go in the back of my Cub Cadet and power a little water pump like this. And so that's what we're gonna try to do today. We're gonna figure out a way to use this to get the water out there, and then we're gonna plug it into here and see if it works. Check out Anchor, there's a link in the description. Clicking that link will let Anchor know that you saw this video and supporting businesses that support my channel make making videos like this possible. Let's get this stuff going and see if it works. My dad has taken it upon himself to try to rid 30 acres of cockleburrs, one plant at a time, and I can't wait till 2075 when he finishes this project. Nice windy day to start a fire in my field, dad. I see my dad's recruited some help. Mom of all trades, so kind, so willing. This is my father, dad of all trades. Dad, how old are you now? 70. And a professional plumber. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> all right, dad, why are we doing this project today instead of a week ago? Because it's sunny. Because you wanted to save 35 cents, and so he took an entire afternoon to go to several different stores to find a cheaper plastic pipe. One really cool thing about this pipe is that it's supposedly frostproof, but we're also going to find out if my dad's equally cheaper connection points that he found online are also frostproof when it freezes because I'm skeptical at best. According to our treasure map, we're coming from the artesian wellhead we're now going to run this black pipe all along the fence with a bunch of uprights so we're going to extend our test pipe here with one of these hopefully not awful online cheaper connections dad has the gloves and the stronger hand so i'm going to try not to catch him on fire Yund. Oh, okay. Mom of all trades, what a hero. I made the phenomenal mistake of not mowing at the end of the season because I wanted there to be more stored grass for the cows to eat, but I forgot about the cockleburrs and the milkweed and the other things that would grow to be like the size of actual trees before it actually grows. The cool thing about this black pipe is that it is flexible so you can drive over it with machines. And a huge shout out to my friend Morgan Gold who gave me the idea to use this to make a temporary permanent solution to my very pressing problem of water. Okay, so these are the quick connect uprights to set up our faucets. So these little parts 
are super expensive in the grand scheme of things. However, we're saving lots of money because this, this is the same system we use over at the dairy down the street. And do as I say, not as I do, kids. And don't get animals before you have the infrastructure sure, the infrastructure sure to support them, or you will spend a lot of your time doing what I've spent most of the last three years doing, which is undoing my last good idea. What a beautiful little Christmas wreath you've got on there, sir. In the vein of saving some money, we're gonna use old lengths of clothes because we only need really short pieces. I really should have mowed first here. This little box of glory is how we make that old hose into many, many new ones. What? I, I mean, it'd be fascinating if it works. Yeah, I mean, why not? I don't know why it wouldn't work. Except that's about That's backwards. I think that's all right. It's because I'm doing everything with the other hand. It's like I've never touched anything before. And of course, now that's backwards because it's just the way my life works. And how do we know which direction we're going? We in? sure don't. Oh, I guess I'm going to I don't remember a time I wasn't trying to make this work. You have two dummies that don't know anything about plumbing. I'm sorry, Dad, you're not yeah, this, a dummy. You're very smart. Act, I beg, oh, I love charcuterie. Charcuterie is life. Dad, I got you a snack. All right, so what Uncle John is doing here is trying to save $3. We found this hose in the garbage and we decided to make all of our little sections of hose that we need between all of the components from that garbage hose. So we're very limited to the lengths of hose that are not cracked and or kinked. So hopefully we have enough hose. Ah, darn tootin' this stupid garbage hose. Wait. And it says right on that, don't what? use a collapsible inlet. <clears throat> what? Because it'll suck it shut. I just saw the uh, warning on the thing. Ah! All Moses had to do was hit a rock with a dang stick. I really feel like we should be on that level at this point. All right. Say a prayer for us, Uncle John. Now, as the sun is setting, we're finally actually doing something. We actually spent most of the day undoing the last thing that we were trying to do, and now here we are. This little piece right here is what had me crying in the plumbing aisle, by the way, and my dumb broken hand does not have enough strength in it to twist this stuff the way that it wants to. So now, this is where this thing really shines. These handy dandy little quick connects make it super easy to take a hose on and off. All right, well, my one hour project has now taken like nine hours, so we don't need these anymore. Morgan said that if I had a friend helping me, it would take five hours to do 1500 feet with multiple uprights. It's been four days. And it's not his fault, just to be clear, it's mine, I, because I can't do math or get the right thread count or anything. By the way, I, as I'm doing this, I realize, I think, I'm pretty sure red tape is for air and blue tape is for water, but we're not gonna care about that right now. So, what we're gonna do, we are fabricating a new hose with the correct thread, with the correct things, with the hard pipe. So now, thank you. Little clamshell claw working its magic there. And now we're going to thread these. Wow, like we thought we were gonna have to take so many parts back and hilariously the, the like random things, the random assortment I grabbed as we were walking out of the store has come in so clutch. When in doubt, buy everything and return the rest. Oh, I think Oliver is coming out to see us for his daily video uh, cameo. Oh, that's one of the stray cats, never mind. So, we started this project at 10 o'clock this morning. Sorry, the cows have come over and it's very cute and distracting. But it is now 4 something p.m. This was supposed to take an hour. I thought I had everything ready and we would just be able to assemble it and it would go. And here we are now, aging right before your very eyes. This project has aged me at least five years. How about you? This is kind of the end of the line and we're finally, finally ready to test it. So back to the wellhead we go. 
Okay, so first we have to turn off the pond water and turn on the water to the end of the field. Previously, we only had water right there. Well, let's be honest, previously we didn't have water anywhere, except for at the hose, which is about 550 feet that way. And a 550 foot hose is a lot of hose, in case you're wondering. Okay. All right, moment of truth. Oh my Lanta, we have water in our field, Dad. And what's more amazing is that our idiotic plumbing actually worked. Hey, Duke! Dukey! Hey, Duke! Come here, little buddy. You want a sip of water? Come on! Come here, Dukey! Come on, little muffin. Look, buddy. Come here, Dukey. Come here, Dukey. Yay, Duke! Look at you, you little muffin. Well, well, well. We've got ourselves some good old-fashioned sulfur water out for the cows in the middle of the field. And now, to actually prove whether or not we can get water all the way across the field, we're gonna just dump this out, load back up, head on down. Okie doke, artichoke. Take our handy dandy quick connect, stick it up in there. Take our little stock tank out. Oh, Duke, you're joining us here as well. Very cooperative. Grab our hose and power up the beast. gosh, look at that. Absolutely wild. Oh, he's eating my nest. A little bird gave me this and I've been carrying it around for a really long time and Duke almost just ate it. We'll put that away. He actually also tried to eat my charcuterie earlier. Two years in the making. Woo! Okay, so now that we have proof of concept, we have water, all the way through the field. Now the real fun starts. And oh, hold on. There's what? A giant hole in your pad. Oh, I know. It's it's not. No, it's not a hole, Adam. This has been patched. Listen, you use what you've got to get where you need to go. We have a scrappy piece of hose. We have a scrappy pair of repaired pants. It's all fine. Back to the video. Obviously, this tiny tank is not enough to service all of my cows. And this setup is a little bit complex and. Uh, involves a lot more steps than I want long term but at least in the short term the next step is to bring my bigger tank out here basically run a wire and we'll have two days worth of water with one day's worth of water chores because the electric line will run right over the big tank we'll fill it up with the pump and then I've got two days of fences already set up which is gonna save me so much time we no longer have to do the lanes all the way back down to that one water trough we're not gonna be dealing with dust along the pathway as they're walking back and forth to the water trough we're gonna have so many less flies around because we're not gonna have one stationary water spot where they can lay their eggs and all that stuff this is so good for the grass so good for the cows so good for me no more buckets huzzah if you like cows and you want to learn more about why we're doing what we're doing and how, check out this video. I will see you there. Cheers!